sort of a bit of a demand now for more Canadian bread material as opposed to always having to import things. Um, plus, it gives an opportunity for the plant, uh, big plant producers to make some money at their end as well by having a new product to offer to the public. All right, next, please. Okay, so here are the plant selections that we have. Uh, we have nine that we're working with um, in this particular project. Um, most of these are native Newfoundland plants. I should no note that. Uh, the Andromeda glacophylla, our selection for this one is a more drought-resistant selection that we found. Calamia polifolia, we have a white-flowered selection. The Cotoniaster franchetti is a particularly silvery lead selection. We have a golden form of Norway spruce, a golden form of white spruce, a prostrate blue-green variety of juniper, um, a dwarf salix, a silver-leaf salix, and a creeping larch. Next, please. Okay, you can just see on these images here uh, a, a very quick shot of uh, these particular plants in question. Um, at the top on the left-hand corner is the Andromeda going across clockwise. Then is our silver-leaf willow, our prostrate um, creeping juniper coming down. Then is our golden Norway spruce coming back across the prostrate larch, the golden white spruce. Um, bottom left-hand corner, the silvery-leaved uh, cotoneaster, the white calmia, and the uh, dwarf mounding uh, willow that we have. Okay, so our year one objectives, we uh, compiled a booklet that we provided to the nurseries, which showed uh, information on particular plants, a bit of the, um, I guess, the selling features of those particular plants. Um, and they, these were sent out to various um, big propagating nurseries to see who would be willing to participate in trying these particular plants. Uh, through the jigs and the reels, we actually got um, a number of different um, companies from across the country. We did provide them, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, like I said, a, a PDF on the new features of the plants and the protocols on propagation based on our experience. Because what we, how we experience things weren't necessarily the same ways some of the nurseries are experiencing, so I found out now. So here's a sample page from the book showing our Salix candida. Um, it's a male clone, common name is called a hoary willow. We provide information on the height, our recommended spacing, the hardiness zone. Hopefully these will be plants that can be worked right across the country. Uh, growing conditions, attributes of the foliage, attributes of the flowers, if they're applicable. A lot of these particular plants are more based on their foliage than they are their flowers. Next. Okay, and then this information was also provided to them, um, again, in more of a chart form, with propagation information about how we've propagated them here at our botanical garden, okay, and about how many years we anticipate that plant would take to get it to a marketable size. Um, okay, so continuing our trial uh, year one, we uh, have set up trial st sites now participating in trying nurseries. Uh, we are in process of shipping out material. Uh, that's still ongoing because, as it turned out, some of the nurseries have not had such great success in rooting this material. So we uh, have to go into this again um, and resend them more material. Uh, the nurseries that are involved in this particular project are Bylands, Neo Plants, Lakeshore Tree Farm, Jeffries, Sheridan, J.C. Backer and Sons, Quebec Multiplants, and Corn Hill. So we have a fairly um, even distribution right across the country from the coldest areas to the more mild areas to see how these particular plants um, are going to perform. Now, sort of going a little bit above and beyond this, we did contact Phytoclone in Quebec, and they're going to investigate the tissue culture potential of some of these selections because perhaps tissue culturing would be a faster way to bulk up the numbers of these plants um, if any of these should uh, pr you know, prove to be a valuable assets, I guess, to the, uh, to the nursery industry. Okay, so um, right now, again, the trying nurseries are propagating these plants. They've had some successes, some failures, as I mentioned. Um, they are going to also keep records on the propagation protocols they use, the success rates, growth rates, and overall impressions of the plant in regards to their habit uh, disease insect issues. We um, are providing them with a template where they can fill in that information um, so that all the nurseries uh, are on the same page, so to speak, so that we can very easily compare to see uh, if the, you know, how results are comparing between the various nurseries. And we will also carry out the same um, research at our end as well and compare our results to their results. Next, please. Okay, so we've already gotten a few photos back from some of the nurseries that are having a little bit of success. Um, so here's uh, Bylands 
uh, Juniper's Communis selection that we had. Uh, I'm very optimistic that they have it in a proven winner spot. <laughs> I'm hoping that indeed it may end up being a proven winner. It would be absolutely wonderful if that was the case. Next. And uh, Quebec Multiplants has also sent us um, some photos of how their plants are performing. In this particular case, the two willows, uh, the little dwarf mounding Salix calcicola, and then the silver leaf one, Salix candida, which I suppose a bit of bias. That's the one that we think has the greatest potential um, to be a marketable plant because it is hardy right across the entire country um, and it has some wonderful attributes. Okay, so continuing on. Uh, we also have done uh, part of it. We are going to go out each year to different areas of the island looking for more potential new plants. So this year we went to northern Newfoundland, uh, spent a, a week up there trouncing around the, the countryside looking for new and interesting plants, um, collected cutting seeds and whatnot, brought those back. We are also continuing to, and we will continue, of course, throughout uh, our own breeding and selection of new plants being grown here at the Botanical Garden. So just to show you a couple of images here, these are some of the cuttings that we collected up on the northern <coughs> peninsula. Uh, in particular, we're looking at the uh, sort of the red-tinted um, ribes selection we have on the top of that picture there. And then what was really exciting to us is, even though it's not a native plant, we were growing a flat of Syringa wolfii, one of these large flowered um, uh, lilacs, and one of them ended up being variegated. Uh, it has this beautiful uh, white mottling throughout the foliage. In fact, when the new leaves first come up, they're almost pink in color. So we're really excited and hoping that this is going to be um, a true variegation that will carry on in the plant. So right now, that's, of course, um, sleeping, so to speak, in our cold frames. Um, and we'll see how that performs come next year. Um, one of the other projects that we're working on as well as part of this, and, and it has been continuing now for a while, um, has been our rhododendron breeding. And uh, we're trying to breed for rhododendrons that have a compact habit, um, that have interesting flower colors, and hopefully will be um, plants that will be more widely um, growable, we'll say, throughout eastern Canada. We know they won't grow on the prairies, it's just cold there. But uh, certainly from Ontario and points further east, as well, of course, as, the, uh, as British Columbia, these could be new varieties of rhododendrons. Right now there's virtually no one, I don't believe, or very little, uh, breeding of rhododendrons taking place within Canada. Okay, some of the challenges. Um, what we've discovered is that we thought we could sort of send out all the material at once, but that's not the case because every nursery has their own protocols as to what plant is best propagated at what time of the year. So we're finding that we're sending out material, um, you know, in small batches to, you know, three and four times each season to the various nurseries. Those that are doing grafting, of course, we were too late before the project started um, last year in April. A lot of these people want the grafting material like in, in January, February. So we're now in the process of sending that material out. So as a result of that, that's actually put them almost like a year behind as far as being able to do a proper trial of these, these plants as, as it turns out to be. Um, some of the plants have rooted very easily. Some of them have not rooted so easily. Even though we've been able to root them, it seems like from a professional, and I don't consider ourselves professionals here, but from the professionals, they seem to be having issues, which sort of surprises me. So, um, you know, some of these plants are just not proving to fit in the normal propagation protocols that most of these nurseries would do uh, for propagating similar plants, say, in the same genera. Um, so anyway, we, we will continue on with this, um, and hopefully... As this season progresses, they will have better luck, um, and like I say, we'll, they'll try some other uh, um, different ways of propagating at their end. Hopefully, they will have success. I and mean, if we could root them here, I see no reason why the professionals can't root them. <laughs> so it's just a matter of them trying to figure out what works best for them, I guess. Okay, so next year, what's in the coming year? Um, well, as I mentioned, we still have to send out more propagation material, uh, just simply because some of them were not successful in the first year. We will continue on our breeding and selection of plants here at the Botanical Garden. We do have another field trip planned this year to the southwestern region of the province. And right now we're in the process of uh, trying to complete our non-prop agreements. Because we are now part of, of course, we're part of, of Memorial University, we have to send all these non-prop agreements. It had to be going through with the lawyers down there. And you can well imagine the red tape that's involved there. So this is turning out to be a much more time-consuming process than I ever thought was going to be the case. But we are, again, plugging along on those. Um, of course, as I mentioned, some of the plants have proved to be more, propag or more difficult to propagate than we thought. Some of the plant material, of course, not even going to get to the propagators until this year. So that's like 
one whole year is gone. We only have two more years. So it's going to be very difficult to get a final trial result at the end of this. Uh, we anticipate that this project, not as much as far as being funded is concerned, but as far as now we got the ball rolling with our connections with the nursery industry, that we will continue on and they can continue to trial these plants beyond uh, the breadth of the, uh, the ending of this particular clusters project. Next. Okay, so the last year we will still again continue to um, collect new plants out in the wild, select new plants, continue breeding our new plants. Hopefully within the third year we will get more concrete trial results from the participating nurseries. We're already starting to get some results back even after the first year. But essentially after the end of the three years we'll compile all, compile all that, do a comparison between the various trialers, see why plants indeed of these nine selections have proven to be ones that have great potential to get onto the market versus those that are just eh, maybe the, tri the, the nurseries are thinking, ah, this is just not really worth it, it's too difficult to propagate, the growth rate's too slow from their end as far as production is concerned. So we certainly anticipate that a number of these plants may very well drop off the, uh, off the pallet, so to speak, um, by the end of the project. But we are hopeful that we will get at least one, if not several, um, of these nine that there will be uptake in the market to get these out, out there, um, in which case then we can get them um, uh, royalty bearing, provide, provide some money here for our botanical garden, provide a new product for the nursery to get out into the market that's Canadian bread, um, and hopefully it'll be a win-win for, for everyone that's involved. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the challenge overall, we'll say, um, for this project from our perspective is we did lose two years in the delay of the, of the project um, in it. So we went from five years to three years. So whether or not you can really do a proper trial in uh, that short a period of time when really the nurseries are only going to get two years uh, of actually growing at best on some of these plants uh, before the end of the clusters project. So you know, whether or not we get a royalty bearing product out of this at the end of the cluster seems perhaps a bit doubtful, but certainly the, uh, the groundwork will have been put into place and uh, we are certainly at our end planning on continuing with this even on our own to get these plants out to market because we're very confident that we should certainly be able to get a couple of these plants out there on the market. Okay, now as far as knowledge transfer is concerned, our project is not so much one that you're going to get like a scientific paper as such from it. So um, for, in our case here, um, it'll be a new plant release. We are planning on going in the, th in the third year. We're planning on attending um, Horde East, which I think will be held in Moncton at that particular year, um, to basically talk about the, the clusters project, what results we've gotten up to that point, what are potentially some new plants that will be released on the market, um, and we have intentions of us also releasing an article into the landscape trades um, to, to basically get all that information out there then to growers and breeders and um, whatnot right across the entire country. Okay, I think that's the end. Very good. Thanks, Todd. You were helping us get slowly back on track. But <laughs> I'm sure I that I was going to be fairly quickly getting through this. <laughs> no, that's, that's perfect and, and, and an interesting project. I, there, there's, there's obviously time for some questions, and uh, so I'll open the floor briefly for that. And if anybody doesn't have any, I know that we do here. <laughs> uh, Rob from Sheridan Nurseries. Hi, Rob. How you doing? Not bad. Uh, one thing is just uh, not much of a question, just more of a comment. Um, as you move forward with getting this material released uh, for nurseries to grow for sale to the public, I think you're going to have to start now uh, getting professional photography done. That okay. is going to be key um, in order to do POP material as well as picture tags. And then I do have a question is, what is the thought process on uh, royalties? How much are you looking at royalties? Is it 25 cents? Is it a buck? That's gonna yeah, be, well, that's we've... Because we, that's going to drive, yep. drive the market price. Right. And secondly, uh, is, is everyone open to having this also go south of the border? Um, right now, we have one plant that's on the market, which is our Philadelphia Starbright. Correct. Um, and I think the royalty on that is around 30 cents or so. 
30, 35. So we would anticipate probably a, a similar um, value on the plants given because you don't want to overprice it, um, you know, because it sort of reduces everything. Now, some of these plants, of course, are going to be pricier um, and only available in limited quantities. Perhaps is only a more of a niche market. I'm thinking particularly like the prostrate larch, especially if it's top grafted as a weeper. That's not going to be a plant that's going to sell a lot compared to something like the silverleaf willow, which could be used pretty much anywhere, like municipalities, landscaping, whatever the case may be. So that's one that we would anticipate would probably have much larger numbers and therefore a, uh, a lower royalty um, attached to it. Okay, any, <clears throat> any other questions? Yes, I do. It's Caroline from IGDO. Uh, maybe I missed the information, but is there any um, test, trial, or concern about the plant that can uh, es escape the landscape? Um, at this stage in the game, most of the plants, as far as I know, that we're dealing with are not ones that um, have ever been noted to be invasive alien species within Canada. Um, a number of these, well, I think they all can potentially produce seed, but um, in the case I know of our willows, they're both male selections, so unless there's a female nearby, which is highly unlikely, they'll never set seed anyway. So because they're male clones, they're, going to be, they're, they're not going to be seed producers. So there won't be any issues with those. Um, I know things like the Andromeda and Calmia, they're native anyway. So it's really the only two plants that are non-natives from a Canadian perspective is the uh, golden um, Norway spruce and our Catonia aster selection. So really the other seven plants are all native Canadian plants anyway. So there would be no issues as far as um, alien species are concerned. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> I have one quick question before I reopen the floor because we still have a little more time. But um, the, uh, the 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 trials at the different nurseries, uh, what what is the scale of them, and does the variability in their production or propagation techniques create an issue when when interpreting the results? Um, yeah, that's good. there's going to be some variation there for certain, and right off the bat, I know that not all the nurseries are propagating all nine of the plants. So uh, certainly like on the prairies, they're not even going to bother with things like the calamia and the andromeda because they're just not hardy species for the prairies. So it's going to be, in that case, very, very minute. Uh, it may only be uh, two or three nurseries in which we'll be able to, to compare results between. So that, that is sort of proving to be somewhat problematic. But do you take into account the, the variable techniques in, in their, uh, their production strategy or their propagation techniques? I mean, if some, you know, some of them you, you mentioned it works better than others, and it's probably a, they're resulting from uh, varying techniques. And how do you... Well, the, and right now, as it turns out, most of the nurseries are using similar techniques. It's just that that particular technique doesn't work. So uh, as, a, as a case in point, um, our silverleaf willow that we have, we've rooted that just in water. Like, you can't do any easier than that. And yet, and I suggested that to nurseries, and other nurseries tried that, and, like, I don't think anybody had success rooting it in water. And yet, that's all we do is root it in water. It's that so, special uh, Newfoundland water. Yeah, it must be something in our water, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, so that in itself, right, from the... Initial results, I haven't gotten back a lot of propagation techniques information yet from the nurseries, but the little bit that I have gotten back, it seems like they're all using very, very similar techniques um, at this stage in the game. But what's odd is that even though some of the nurseries are using similar techniques, some of them have had success and some of them have not. And uh, so I'm not sure what other factor might be coming into play at those particular nurseries end that haven't been successful versus those nurseries that were successful. Hmm. And, okay. Um, any other questions while we have just a few more minutes here? We all good? Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm.